So in this video, I'm going to go over and uh, explain how to do uh, how to apply the thin lens equation, and uh, to make sure you know how to do ray diagrams for convex and concave lenses, and convex and concave mirrors. So we'll start off with uh, a convex lens, and we'll talk about basically here's a convex lens. So it's supposed to be thin. Okay, so it's supposed to be thin. So, and here's our central axis of the mirror of the uh, lens. Okay, so this is a convex lens. Okay, so here's our convex lens. So the one thing you have to know is that uh, when you're looking at thin lenses, right, these thin lenses, um, the focal point, right, if they're very thin, right, is actually symmetric. So I'm going to assume they're symmetric. So let's go and uh, assume the focus is right here. Now, the object, right, is what we're trying to imagine. There's an object right here, and uh, this arrow represents the object. Okay, so it could be a guy standing, or it could be a building, whatever, but here's our lens. So here's our central principal axis of the lens. And we can always draw three, three ray diagrams, three rays, to know exactly where the uh, final image is going to be located. Now, you don't have to worry about drawing all three right, you know, three light rays. All you have to do is make sure you understand how to draw two light rays, not three. So make sure, like, uh, so you can actually draw three, and I'll actually draw all three. So for example, here is our object. And I don't know where the image is, but we know in a convex lens, the main idea in a convex lens, right, is that parallel light rays come into a convex lens, and they get focused at a focal point, which is symmetric on both sides. Okay. Okay, so here's our focus, and we follow one light ray going right through. Here's our light ray going right through, and that light ray gets focused through the focus. So I'm going to get this going like this. Hopefully I can draw this properly. A second light ray, right, we can always guarantee, this is the easiest light ray you can always get, is that because it's a thin lens, right, it's very thin. It's like a window right in the center. So it's like uh, nothing. So when we sent a light ray right through the center, it should come out roughly parallel to the original light ray. So I know there's a little shift in the light ray, but we don't have to worry about that because it's supposed to be a thin lens. So our close approximation is that if I can get this, I wish I had a ruler. Actually, I do have a ruler. So let's make sure I can get this in. Okay. So uh, roughly here. So you don't have to get this right, but I'm just trying to make sure that I get three light rays all coming to the same point. So here is our object, our image, I'm sorry. So here is our image. Okay, so our we have two light rays, so one light ray coming parallel to the principal axis gets diverted through the focus and comes out. And another light ray going through the center comes roughly about there. And a third light ray is, let's see if I can get this properly, it goes to the focus here. And I, hopefully I can get this properly. And then goes right across parallel. So remember, parallel light rays going through the focus come out parallel to the principal axis. So they come out here. So all three light rays call, come out to here. Now the main thing you have to remember when you're doing these calculations is sketch out this diagram, roughly have a rough idea exactly what's happening. It's a convex lens. Your object is further than the focal point. And we know that, so D object is the object distance. And then di is equal to the image distance. And the focal length is the focal length. Yeah. And our thin lens equation, right? So remember, do, right, is always greater than zero. It's always positive, so you always assume it's positive. di is positive if it's in this area. So whenever you send an image through a convex or concave lens, DIs, right, are positive if it's on this side, on the correct side where you're expecting the image to be, on the opposite side of the lens. So object distance. So just if the image, right, is actually on this side, right, then you might have a negative value. 
So the main thing is the image distance. So let's let's do a calculation. We know that we know the thin lens equation. Actually, the derivation for the thin lens equation is quite complicated because there's so many different cases. There's actually eight different cases that you have to worry about, and uh, those are actually completely derived. And uh, this analysis, right, the equation that you finally get as one over do plus one over di equals one over f, right, is actually a very simplification of a very complex analysis because there's so many different cases. And those cases have been absorbed, right, into cases where di could be positive or negative and f could be positive or negative. And we've applied it to both convex lenses, concave lenses, convex mirrors, and concave mirrors. And so the beauty of it is that the analysis, right, so the exact derivations, right, is not usually found in many textbooks. But uh, I actually did put in lecture notes to make sure that you have an idea where all these, I these equations are coming from and how we derive this final form of the equation, right? Where di's could be positive or negative and f's could be positive or negative and to absorb the cases of mirrors and lenses all in one shot. And that's really a beautiful idea. So when you're looking at this equation, right, it's a beautiful idea that you've taken like many different cases and absorbs them into basically one single equation but you have to know how to apply it to make sure you understand. So for convex lenses, right? So for example, so we know that uh, I need to make a couple of little statements. When an object is, uh, I don't think I really emphasized it, but it's in the notes, but I'm sure you probably didn't read through the notes. So I want to make sure you understand the idea. So here is your object. The object, right? Here's your image. Now, if I place an object further from the focal point, right? And I take a sheet of paper, and I put the paper right here, right? And I would actually see an image. And that's because I see, I would see an image, right? This is called a real image, as opposed to a virtual image. So in this case, right, it is a real image. And so for a convex lens, right? So imagine that somebody gave you a focal length of, let's say, 20 centimeters. So because it's convex, right, it's going to be positive. It's a positive 20 centimeters. So 20 centimeters from here to here, 20 centimeters from here to here. Let's say the object distance, right, DO is given by, it's always going to be positive. So let's make it, uh, um, I don't know, 30 centimeters. Not very original. <laughs> okay, 30 centimeters. And so how do we solve for DI? So we're going to solve for DI, basically moving everything to one side. So DI is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do. And I can remove f do and then get do minus f and then invert both sides and we get the <clears throat> distance of image is equal to f do over do minus f. So in this case, right, I won't do a calculator, but um, so in this case, we're looking at a positive 20 centimeters because it's convex. The distance to object is uh, 30 centimeters. And then we have 30 minus 20. And so we have 10 divided by uh, 600, so we get 60. And notice we are expecting the image, right, to be actually further away than the, uh, uh, beyond the focus. And that's where we get 60 centimeters. So here, from here to here, absolutely 20 centimeters, but then 40 centimeters further, which is 60 centimeters from here to here, is the distance image. You're gonna be using the same equation, right, for if and somebody gives you an object distance, right? The only difference, right, is you have to make sure that you remember that the F, right, is positive or negative based on uh, whether it's a convex or concave uh, mirror or lens. So you have to get those correct. So if you get that, then that's fine. Anyway, so remember a couple of things. The image is going to be inverted. It's going to be upside down and it's going to be real because I take a sheet of paper and I physically put it here and I actually see an image on the, uh, so it's called a real image. So that's the main idea. It's called a real image because uh, if you take something physical and place it right here, right, you'd actually see something on the piece of paper on your present projection. So let's try now a concave lens. It's the same equation for everything. So 
I can uh, keep all the numbers the same actually and uh, but let me erase the top half and uh, let's do so the notes are probably long explaining the details of everything right and you probably didn't really appreciate it I really wanted you to appreciate how beautiful this equation is right because it was actually coming from something in many different cases you took a case of like lenses mirrors convex concave and you're getting all these chimes of whether the object is closer to the focus or further away and stuff so all these right are absorbed into those all those different derivations that got absorbed into one equation and that's kind of beautiful you don't really see that like uh, when somebody explains the beauty of like uh, these physics equations so let me erase this and we can try the same numbers again like 20 and 30 looked good actually did I make a mistake 20 times 30 600 600 divided by 10 yeah 60 okay so So the main idea is that uh, the first thing you should try to do, right, is sketch out a diagram. In all of these problems, when you do in physics, right, sketch out the diagram before you do anything. Okay, so let's do another case, right? And I'll just mix up the numbers slightly. So I like 20 and 30. <laughs> they seem to be nice round numbers. So let's stick, stick with that but now we're looking at a convex let's do a convex uh, lens again and here is our here's our focus okay actually I'll put the focus over here so here's our focus here is our object and I think I made it too big but anyway so let's see roughly here okay so this is the symmetric focus so here is our object Okay, so here's our object. Here are the focal points, the two focal points with light. So remember, convex lenses takes parallel light rays and all the light rays converge to one point called the focus. So that's the main idea I have to get across. So we'll follow a couple of things. The main, uh, you want to get across this object, right? That you can always draw three light rays, but at least you should be able to draw one light ray which is right going to the center going straight through that's one and the other one is parallel now I won't draw three light rays I'll just actually do two so to make sure you understand the basic idea you can always do two light rays one light rays goes through the lens and <laughs> I, I think uh, I might be out of space <laughs> I, should have, I wanted to create space at the bottom but uh, let's see uh, if I can get this yes he went through okay so here it is that's one light ray parallel light rays went through the focus and hopefully the same distance the second light ray basically goes through the center and goes out like this okay now we're gonna actually do a third light ray but I don't think I want to explain those details because you might get confused I really want to make sure the center light ray is the easiest one to draw it goes right through to the system because right in the center it looks like as if this is a thin pane of glass and so you're just actually seeing a light ray going right through slightly displaced based on the thickness of the glass but you won't really uh, notice that so the center light ray and if you kind of follow this which I'm, I'm afraid that I'm terrible at this but somewhere over here you will see your final image so if you put an object here right if I was standing over here I would actually see a very large image and one of the oh it's nearly off the screen but anyway if you can trace this light ray out this way and this way it looks like this image is very large this is how a magnifying glass works so if you take a magnifying glass and put an object between the focus and the lens right you'll actually see a very big object well, if I standing you while watching through the lens it looks as if this is a really large object and so we can actually do a calculation on this and say okay so let's go through the calculation so let's assume that the focal length is still uh, 20 centimeters 
and but the distance to the object actually let's make it 30 centimeters because I and then the distance to the object is it's going to be positive again so remember it's a positive 30 centimeters because it's a con convex lens so it's going to be positive 30 centimeters distance to the object right let's make this uh, 20 centimeters okay and then we have to find again so the beautiful idea that we're going to apply is this basically the thin lens equation so again we're going to see it's 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over distance to the image and we derive that move everything to one side I'm repeating this okay just to make sure that you understand I'm going to factor out at the bottom f do and then write do minus f and then we can and so we're left with that the distance to the image is the same equation we got earlier it's f times do do minus f in this case it happens to be 30 centimeters okay that's your um, focal length at distance to the object is 20 actually I don't know why you put centimeters down they all cancel anyways to get centimeters so let's not worry about this just make sure you're using some standard units so 20 centimeters divisible by do is 20 centimeters minus 30 centimeters okay so if they got those numbers correct so if you take a look it's 30 20 20 minus 30 so hopefully do is 30 I just want to make sure these numbers are correct <laughs> okay so anyway it looks exactly the same as before so it's minus 60 centimeters so 20 minus 30 is minus 10 minus 10 divisible by 600 is 60 centimeters so it's minus so the main key idea is remember distances are positive for images if they are on the correct side of the over here on this side it's positive but it's over here right that's why from here to here it's 60 centimeters negative it's negative so you have to catch that okay so just remember that uh, when you have a convex mirror and the question is this image right well a couple of things one before right the image was inverted okay but here right the image is erect so it's in the same sense as the object another thing is is this virtual or real well if I take a sheet of paper right and I put it right here right over here would you see anything and the answer is you wouldn't see anything on the mirror right on the paper right you wouldn't see an image of anything so this is called a virtual image it's called virtual because if you take a sheet of paper right right over here you wouldn't see anything there on um, before right when the I put the object beyond the focal length we had to, the image over here and if we put a sheet of paper you'd actually see an image on the piece of paper and that's why it's called a real image here right the object is between the focal length and the op and the uh, lens and because it is right then if I put a sheet of paper here it's impossible to see anything yes if I'm standing over here it looks as if something was there but physically if I put a piece of paper there right if I'm standing on that side right I would actually see something very large but a piece of paper I wouldn't see an image so it's called a virtual image okay so hopefully you got the idea of virtual and uh, let's now try uh, a concave lens it's the same equation in fact I'm going to be using the same uh, derivation over and over again just changing numbers around so this is the key idea you have to make sure you understand that uh, it's one beautiful equation called the thin lens equation and we can actually calculate the magnification so I should actually write the magnification so if you look in the derivation of the notes right you'll actually see that uh, the magnification right happens to be the um, height of the image over the height of the object and if you look in the derivation right in the lecture notes right which I won't derive but uh, it's actually minus distance to image to over distance to the object in this case right the minus distance right happens to be uh, minus 60 and the distance to the object is 20 centimeters you cancel and you get a factor of um, 
uh, sorry, minus minus 60. So minus minus 60 is uh, positive 60 over 20, and we get a factor of 3. So there's a 3 magnification of this image. If you actually did uh, the magnification on the last problem, you'll actually see it'll be a negative value, meaning that it got inverted. The magnification created an inverted object. Okay, so I'm sorry I didn't do that, but uh, you should try it out just to make sure you understand the basic idea. But basically, you should always draw a ray diagram to make sure roughly the equation, but it's only one equation that you have to know. It's this one thin lens equation. Okay, so let's now do a concave... Um, concave lens and we'll put the objects at various locations and see what what happens then okay so again take out my windex start wiping this out yeah i'm sorry i i really don't want to edit the videos because it takes post-processing editing videos takes a long time so i'm just going to you can you're going to have to suffer by watching me erase with Windex. Okay, so now we're looking at a um, concave lenses, okay? And then I'm going to repeat the process for concave and convex mirrors, but let's get the same idea. So remember, we can always draw three light rays for every one of these systems, but uh, at least you should be able to draw the central light ray and the one that's going through the focus. There's two actually going through two fo fo foci, but... Uh, Make sure you can actually draw at least two light rays. One is the center is the easiest. And so let me do a, so this is a concave lens. Hopefully I'm not, okay, so um, let's do a concave lens. So here is our concave lens, which is basically thinner in the center and thicker on the, on the outside of the lens. And let's draw a little light, light diagram. So here is our focus. It's symmetric on both sides. Thin lenses are like that. You can actually prove it. But uh, anyway, so here is our object. Let's put it the object way beyond the focal point. So here's our focus. And so the main idea you have to get across, right, is that the parallel light rays going into a concave lens, right, will divert light out as if they came from this focus. So if I, so here's our first light ray coming in, hits the uh, concave lens, and we can draw now that light ray going straight out as if it came from this focus. So here's our light ray coming out like this. Okay, hopefully you saw that. So any light ray coming through here, so it's over here, it would be diverging out this way as if it's coming from a straight line going along here. So this segment of the line is parallel going to this focus, this line right here. Okay, so that's called diverging. So if uh, I saw a light ray coming here, it would diverge this way. So it would be spreading out this way. But all I need to do is two light rays. The second light ray is basically going to the center. That's easy. It's always going to be a straight line. So hopefully I can draw this properly. Oh, got it. Okay, thank God. Okay, got that. So this is a straight line that's going right through the center, and its center looks like a window right in the center because the parallel light, the planes of uh, both surfaces are parallel to each other and it looks as if it's like very thin and going straight through, just like as if you're looking out the window, right in the center though. So these two light rays, they seem to be coming from an object over here. So here is your object, here is your image. Question, Let's. Well, since I wanted to make sure you understand uh, real and virtual, if I take a sheet of paper and put it right over here, would I see anything? 
And the reality is, no, you wouldn't see anything because, you'd, number one, you'd be blocking this light coming in, right? But if I'm standing over it, to all intents and purposes, it looks like the image, the object is over here. This is the image. That's what I'm going to see over here. If I'm standing over here on this side of the lens, I'm looking at this image, I'll actually see this image as if it's coming from this point here. It's smaller. So the magnification is going to be the height, which is going to be positive, and it's going to be small. It's going to be less than one. You can tell because it's these triangles. So anyway, the same equation we're going to be applying, but to hold on a sec. The focal length, right, is, is going to be for a concave lens, is going to be less than zero. So I'll make up some numbers again. So I'll, I'll say the focus is uh, 20 centimeters and the distance to the object is 30 centimeters because they're nice round numbers. Okay, and we're going to use the same equation, but remember, because its focal length is less than zero, this has to be a minus. So it's minus 20 centimeters because it's a concave lens. So we're going to use the same equation over again. So this is going to be 1 over f is equal to 1 over distance of object plus 1 over distance of the image. And uh, so we're going to solve for the distance to image again. And <laughs> I don't think I want to keep repeating this, but... Uh, uh, yeah, let me repeat it just to make sure. So uh, 1 over distance to the image is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do. So make sure, don't just write this. To remember, this is the important equation. We always derive down to actually get the distance to the image and stuff. So here's our distance to the image is equal to common denominator f do. Then this uh, do minus f common denominator. And then flip over to get distance to image is given by f do divisible by do minus f. So in this case, right, the distance to the image is going to be equal to minus 20. Okay, that's the focal length. It's minus because it's a concave lens. We have a distance to the object as 30. We have the distance to the object as 30 minus, and then the focal length is minus 20. And so we're getting a distance to the image, right, as minus 600 divisible by uh, 50. In this case, it happens to be, cross out the 3, 60 divided by 5 is actually, hmm. Minus 12. Yeah, actually, these numbers really did work out nicely. Okay, so I guess this is really good. 20 and 30. I'll try to remember that next time so I don't have to waste time. Uh, yeah, these really rounded up well. Good examples. <laughs> anyway, here is uh, minus 20 centimeters and here's 30 centimeters. 30 minus is 50, and so we get 12 centimeters. So the distance from here to here is minus 12. And notice, Distance to concave or convex lenses, distance images are positive if they're on this side of the lens, if they're what you expect them to be. And if they're on this side, it's negative. So you can see that it's going to be 12 centimeters backwards. So this is actually 12 centimeters from here to here is your image distance. And what's your magnification? Well, let's calculate the magnification. We know that the magnification, right, is given by the height of the image over height of the object and in the in the notes right it's actually derived to make sure you understand everything but uh, you don't have to just just memorize this okay so the derivation is just there so that just in case that you'd like to know exactly where everything came from so this is the distance to the image over the distance to the object in this case it happens to be um, minus 12 centimeters um, yeah, and distance to the object is 30 centimeters. And I guess we can uh, try to reduce this a little bit, right? So that would be uh, divide by 2 here and here. So this will be 6 over 15. Actually, 6 over 15. I can divide again and we'll get, uh, yeah, divide by 3. So we'll get 2 over. 3, which is 0 0.67 magnification, negative. I'm sorry, this is not negative. This is minus. Sorry, I forgot the minus. 
So the minus is positive, this is positive, and this is 0 0.067. So the mag this is uh, about two thirds smaller, right, than this object right here. So if this is one, this would be uh, 0 0.67 in height, the image. So it's smaller. So this is a concave lens where the object is further than the focal length. I'm going to repeat the process again, and uh, when the object is closer between the focal length and the lens, actually you're going to see that uh, it kind of looks. Anyway, let's just do the let's do the diagrams. To make sure that you understand the basic idea. So the main idea is that concave lenses, the focal length, right, is less than zero. When somebody says the focal length of a concave lens, you have to make sure that for you to apply the thin lens equation, you have to make sure that's minus 20 centimeters. So that's the key idea you have to get across. Okay, so, um, wow. Okay, so we're going to do another concave lens. Okay, so we're doing a concave lens again. Yeah. So again, uh, let's imagine that we have a concave lens right over here. It's again, it's overblown because you're supposed to be thin lenses and I'm just kind of making it really look big. But here's our principal axis. And I'll put the focus right over here, and it's symmetrical, so from here to here is this focus. So, and I'll put the, so here's our focus, focal point, meaning that light, parallel light rays coming in, they'll diverge as if they came from this focus. They'll diverge out. So, let's put an object right over here, and let's go through parallel light rays. Parallel light ray comes in. It hits the diverging lens, so this is a convex, sorry, not convex, I'm sorry, it's concave lens. Uh, okay, and uh, so this light ray, it diverges, and let's see if I can get this, uh, get this right, yeah. So I, it's supposed to be a straight line right across, and it diverges right over this way. So this line and this line are supposed to be like this. So you can always draw three lines, but I won't draw three because you should be able to draw uh, one light ray that's going parallel, diverging out, and the other one is always the easiest lens, the light ray. That is going to the center. That's always a straight line. So hopefully I can draw this properly like this, like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my diagrams are terrible, but uh, it's okay. You should actually try to sketch these out on a piece of paper. So whenever you see a problem, right, with a lens, thin lens or compound lenses where you have multiple lenses one after another, you should always do this. So our, so here is our object, and our image, right, is the intersection of these two light rays, right over here and here. So that's where our image is. So it's going to be smaller than the object. So you can actually tell it looks similar to the last diagram where the ob image was smaller than the object. So the same calculation. So let's imagine that. This time, let's say the focal length is 30 centimeters from here to here. The distance to positive or negative, so it's concave lenses, so it's minus 30 centimeters. Distance to the object, let's make it from here to here, let's make it 20 centimeters. And you're going to do the same calculation, so repeat, make sure that you understand the basic calculation. It's one equation, but you have to know positive or negative, okay? So we know that the image is on this side, so it has to, it has to be a negative answer. We're expecting that. But uh, let's do the calculation anyway. So here is our 1 over f is equal to 1 over distance to the object plus 1 over distance to the image. <sighs> okay, so um, distance to the image over 1 is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do, which is equal to 
distance minus f over do and f invert distance to image is equal to distance to the object times f over distance to the object minus f so it's the same equation for everything so whenever you have an object distance in the image you're always getting the same equation you just have to know how to apply it so in this case right the distance to the image happens to be distance to the object is 20 centimeters focal length is minus 30 and distance to the object happens to be 20 minus minus 30 <laughs> okay hopefully i got that right minus 30 yeah, yeah. so you're left with uh, minus 600 divisible by 50 so you can cross that out and uh, 60 divided by 5 which is minus 12 centimeters so your distance is object is from here to here is 20 centimeters but your image distance happens to be 12 centimeters and what's the magnification the magnification is minus distance of the image over distance to the object in this case right we already know it's going to be a, um, a positive answer because it's the same direction but we also know it's going to be smaller so it has to be less than one so it's the same numbers are nice so distance to the image happens to be minus minus 12 centimeters distance to the object happens to be uh, 20 centimeters and i think uh, from last time right so this is uh, 6 over 10. Hmm, that's interesting did i make a mistake distance to the object hmm. Okay, so in this case, right, um, minus 12 over 20 happens to be 6 over 10, so this is 0 0.6. Interesting. Anyway, so it's 60% uh, of the original image. I think the last time uh, uh, we had a 0 0.667. Interesting. But anyway, uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, I should ask you, is this image real or virtual? So again, we take a sheet of paper and put the sheet of paper right over here. And the reality is that you wouldn't see anything on that sheet of paper. No image would form because you'd be number one blocking the actual, uh, and that's not the important thing. The main thing is that if I take a piece of paper and put something there, I wouldn't see anything on the sheet of paper. So this is actually a virtual image. So in the last problem too, we had a virtual image. So in both cases, right, when the object is closer, right, to the uh, lens than the focus, then we have a virtual image. And it's right side up, and it's magnification of 0 0.6. Okay, so uh, I think I did, uh, let's see, two cases of concave, convex, and now we have to switch over to uh, mirrors, concave and convex mirrors. Okay, so let me erase all this. So remember, the beautiful the idea is that this thin lens equation is coming from many different cases. And that's kind of incredible because uh, usually you don't see that uh, the full derivation of exactly how you get 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over d. But it's in the course notes, but I just put it in there to make sure you understand that there's some beautiful equations coming out. They simplified a lot of complicated ideas, concave, convex, where the object is... Um, uh, anyway, so the main thing is that uh, you just you have to know how to apply the thin lens equation to concave, convex mirrors and lenses. Oh, I got it. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, so now we're switching over to concave mirrors and convex mirrors. So let's take a look at uh, concave mirrors first. So here's our concave mirror, and I they keep everybody keeps emphasizing spherical mirrors, and uh, actually. 
Uh, these mirrors are supposed to be, so if you have a concave mirror, right, for a telescope, for example, right, they're actually parabolic, they're not spherical. You get a concept of something called spherical aberration and stuff, but uh, it doesn't really matter. The main idea is that uh, approximately, right, your parabolic can be approximated via a, a, surf, uh, a circle. So a couple of little things. So if somebody gives you a, so this is a, so a mirror on this side. So this side is the silver area of the mirror, so it's kind of curved. And if it's part of a sphere of a radius r, and it's in the notes, and the derivations are actually pretty straightforward, right? So if this is the radius r, then the focal point, right, is given by r over 2. It's actually in the notes. I won't go through the uh, following lines and stuff. It's not complicated, but you should get a rough idea. But this is an equation that you should actually remember. Focal length is equal to r over 2, the radius of the spherical mirror. But uh, let me, uh, so, so we're talking about convex, sorry, concave mirrors now. So the concave mirror, and so here's our concave mirror. The mirror is on this side, okay? So the reflective portion is on this side, okay? And we're going to assume that, so the main idea you have to get across is that, so let's assume that the focal, so let's say the focus is right over here, not drawn to scale. So here's our principal axis right in the center. So this is the mirror side, right? Mirror side. Okay, so we have a focus. So here's your focus. It's not the center of the circle. It's the, so the center is over here somewhere because it's doubled, right? So um, we'll put, so let's put the object further. So here's our object. So the main thing is that, again, the center light ray is the easiest to get because it's always going straight down the center. And because it's a mirror, it just gets reflected back this way. So this light ray in the center is always the easiest to draw for a lens system, right, it goes straight across in the system, it goes straight, that's a straight line. In a mirror system, right, it gets reflected. So it's the easiest, easiest uh, light ray to draw. You can actually draw three light rays, but I won't go through all three of them. The only two that you have to remember, right, is the one in the center and the one that goes to the focus. So actually, you can do this one too, but uh, so the one that's going parallel to the principal axis goes out and comes out in the focus like this and somewhere over here somewhere you'll see the image and a couple of things so this image why is it real or virtual well take a sheet of paper and if you actually put it over here right right over here like a, take a little piece of paper and just put it over here you'll start seeing an image of this object and because it's real because it projects on a piece of paper right we call this a real image so this is a real image and you can actually tell that it's going to be inverted it's going to be upside down as composed to uh, the original object it's going to be upside down so that's kind of so uh, let's put some numbers in here so I'll try f is equal to 20 centimeters again and uh, the distance to the object is always positive, so that's always going to be, um, so I'll put 30 centimeters. So actually, I should have put a positive, but remember, positive. Positive for concave mirrors. So it's positive for convex lenses, and F is positive for, po for, and the only reason we're doing it, right, is that it collapses all those different variant equations, right, that you get, which is shown in the notes. They actually collapse into one equation called the thin lens equation. And that's kind of a beautiful idea. So, um, and distance to the image, right, the image is positive on this side. If it's on this side, right, you're expecting it to be negative. So it's kind of weird. So image distances are positive on this side and negative on this side. So it's, you have to be a little careful in that. So the same equation again, but uh, uh, I think I'm getting tired, so I'll just write this as, uh, uh, actually, no, I'll derive it because I don't want you to uh, skip steps. So this equation is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI, and uh, moving everything over to here, 1 over DI is equal to 
1 over f minus 1 over distance to the object, and this is f do over distance to the object minus f is 1 over distance to image. Flip it around, and you're left with the distance to the image is equal to f do over do minus f. So it's the same equation everywhere. You just have to make sure you know how to apply your uh, focal length, positive or negative, and the, make sure you understand. So we're expecting this to be positive because it's on the positive side of the mirror. So it's positive images distances are positive. It's on this side of the mirror, on the same as the object side. So let's do some calculations. So the distance to the image is going to be the focal length, which is positive 20 centimeters, times distance to the object is 30 divisible by distance to the object is 30 and uh, yeah minus 20 and so this is 600 divisible by 10 which is 60 positive centimeters so this is 60 centimeters further away and again we could actually do the magnification magnification happens to be uh, minus distance to the image over distance to the object which is derived in the notes okay to make sure you understand where it's coming from uh, distance to the image is given by um, minus positive 60. Remember, it's a minus from this side. And um, distance to the object is 30 centimeters, which is equal to 2. So if I was really far away, right, and I was looking at this object, not looking at the, but looking at the object in the mirror, it would look like as if it's coming from here. So if I was here somewhere, I'd actually notice if I wasn't directly looking at the object, I'd actually notice this image, right? And it would be very large. In fact, um, sorry, this is minus two. <laughs> upside down. I have to make sure that it's upside down. So it's twice as big as the original. And so, so this is a concave mirror. So the procedure, I'm going to repeat again for the same calculation, but I'm going to put the image uh, between the focus and the lens, and I'm going to repeat the calculation over again. Okay, so hopefully you're beginning to understand it's the same basic equation, but reapplying this the concave convex concave. So this is all the thin lens equation. Okay, so again, we're going to be working with a concave lens, sorry, concave mirror, and I just have to make sure this thing is dry. Okay, so let's put the, uh, so again, here is our mirror side is on this side. Okay, so, so this is a concave mirror. And I'll put the focus way over here. It's not drawn to scale, okay? So here's our principal axis. And here is our image, our object. I'll put it right over here. So the object here is our focal point. And again, you're going to have to draw, you can always draw one center line. That's the easiest light ray to actually deal with. You can actually draw three, but I won't go through all of them. So one of them right hits the center of this point right here and then reflects straight out. I don't think I draw, I drew a good job on this one. I, yeah, I think I really messed up that one. Yeah, but anyway, so Parallel light rays hit this and they go into the focus. Wow. I think I really messed up the drawing. Drawing. So parallel light rays going through the mirror come out to the focus. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Oh, this is not very good. Uh, Okay, so let me redo that line over again just to make sure. Okay, so just to make sure that he's in parallel, I'll just put a point here so I know it's equidistant because I know that's the central line. So let's see if I can draw this properly. Okay, hopefully I got that. That's one. Here's a second light ray, and that light ray hits and goes to parallel. Okay, <laughs> hopefully I think I got it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, okay, because uh, I wanted to make sure that this will... Anyway, so if you do it properly, right, you would notice that this object, right, this is spreading out. And uh, as it spreads out, right, you'll actually see that light ray seem to be coming from... So if I follow this light ray coming in this way, that got reflected to the focus. Yeah, my... My diagrams are really terrible. So they should intersect right over here. So this is your image. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I got this nicely. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, it's a sketch. So I get a rough idea. So here's your object. Light rays coming in parallel to the central axis get reflected into the focus. A light ray that goes hit the center gets reflected by angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. It goes straight down this way. And if you follow these light rays across, right, you'll see your image. So a couple of things you should notice. Number one, image is erect, so it's the same direction. And uh, is it real or virtual? Well, take a piece of paper and stick it behind the mirror. How could you see an image? You can't. So this is a virtual image. Virtual. And it's erect, and more importantly, we're expecting that the distance to the image, right, is less than zero because distance to images are positive on this side. For mirrors, for lenses, they're negative on this side, but uh, so you have to be a little careful, right? We only did that convention only because we're condensing several equations into one equation called the thin lens equation. It's in the notes, right? But if you're wondering, there was a big table, right, with eight different cases. And those eight cases were because to show you that those equations collapse only if you assume that uh, concave mirrors, right, have a foc positive focal length. And in, if you select distance the images, positive or negative, and they all collapse into one equation. So that equation is only true if you make this convention. Okay, so it doesn't work anywhere else It's if you have this convention of saying that. Anyway, so di is, and so let's put some numbers in here. So I'll say f is equal to 30 centimeters. The distance to the object is always going to be positive, which is going to be 20 centimeters. So it's between the, whatever, between the, between the focus and the mirror. So the mirror is on this side of the surface. So it's a concave mirror. mirror. And so same calculation again. So we're going to say that the distance to uh, uh, yeah. So 1 over f is equal to 1 over distance to object plus 1 over distance to image and solve. So 1 over distance to image is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do which is equal to FDO. It's the same equation. We're just doing the same thing over and over again, okay? But uh, actually, maybe I'll just write it here once to make sure you understand. But you always start from this one equation. And uh, so this is now um, distance minus F is equal to distance to the image. 1 over distance to image. So I'll write full equation right over here. So I don't think I want to keep repeating this for another two cases. Okay. So yeah, I think I'm tired. FDO over DO minus F. So I put on the side, hopefully it's covered. Yeah, it just covers it. It's like it's just on the page. So we have our distance to the image. And so we do the same calculation again. Okay. So the distance to the image is the focal length 30 centimeters. It's positive because it's a converging, so you have to remember that. So positive 30 centimeters over, the distance to the object is 
20 centimeters. All divisible by distance of the object is positive 20, so 20 centimeters minus, uh, where's F, 30 centimeters. So this is now, so 600 centimeters squared divisible by 20 minus 30, which is minus 10, which is equal to minus 60 centimeters. Okay, great. So we now have the distance to the image, right, which is from here to here, right, is 60 centimeters. Okay, and we can find the magnification as height of the object to the height of the image, but uh, with di, so it's this minus distance to the image over distance to the object. Don't forget, there's always a minus in here. So it's uh, minus minus 60 divisible distance to the object is 20 centimeters, and that's equal to a positive 3. So we get a, so a couple of things. One, the uh, image is virtual, it's erect, and um, it's got a magnification of three. Okay, I think uh, that's the main key ideas for concave. And we're going to repeat the process now for uh, convex mirrors, and uh, hopefully that will cover any misunderstandings. That you might have. Okay, so so it's actually the same equation for everything. Okay, just make sure that you always remember the distance to the object is always positive, and the distance to the image could be positive or negative based on mirrors and lenses. So you just have to make sure it's right side up. And why do we use this convention? It's only because we have, if we use this convention, we collapse the complicated eight different cases of equations, which they're all derived into one equation called the thin lens equation. So it's an important concept. So, um, so now let's go into a convex mirror. And again, we're going to do several cases. So here's our convex mirror. So, but the mirror surface is bulging out. It's it's so light rays kind of like verging out. So this is the mirror side on the other side, this side. Okay. So we do the principal axis, and so again, we're going to put a focus right over here. But we're going to want you to deal with a focus over here. It's symmetric. We're going to put a symmetric focal at this point. And so we'll put the object further out. So here is our object. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's do the, there's one ray we can always do, and hopefully I can get this properly. So I'm going to just put two points here so I know that they're equal distance, because I know the center light ray will just reflect directly off. So I want to make sure I can get this right. So one, this light ray comes in, gets reflected this way. OK, got one. That was good. And then we have a light ray that's coming out, going parallel to the axis. OK, but this light ray, right, as if gets reflected as if it's coming from this point, diverging out. So this light ray, so if I, uh, actually, let me take this off. So we'll draw a light straight line, and hopefully I can get this right. So, yeah, I think so. I got it right. There we go. So draw a line from the focus, and this light ray that's going parallel to the axis will get reflected, going straight out as if it's coming from this focal point right here. So you can always do two light rays very easily. And this this light ray coming from here can be extended further out. And so if I'm standing over here looking at this mirror, I'd actually see as if there was an image right over here. And so you should ask yourself, is this image, well, number one, here's the image, the, the intersection of the light ray that's coming from this light ray and this light ray that's being reflected. So if I'm standing over here, it looks as if there is something over here. It's not really there. So this image, is it real or virtual? So take a piece of paper and uh, put it right there. Well, it's behind the mirror. How can light ever reach it? So that's automatically, it should be going in your head. No, it has to be a virtual image. 
Uh, we also know that it's going to be in the same direction as the original. Yeah. So it's erect. Erect image was so not going to be upside down. So the magnification. And it looks as smaller, right? If you just look at it, it kind of looks smaller. So we're expecting magnification. So get a rough idea how to do this. So let's put uh, the focal length as uh, 20 centimeters. Okay. And be careful, okay? So for convex mirrors, just like concave lenses, the focal length is minus negative. So it's, if somebody says it's a convex mirror, you have to make sure that the focal length is minus 20 centimeters, okay? Minus. And let's put the distance to the object. That's always positive, so I'll put this as 30 centimeters. Okay, let's do some calculations. So actually, uh, you always start from thin lens equation. So this should be 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di with our convention. And then you derive this. Hopefully, uh, I don't have to repeat it again. <laughs> right? So you saw me do it at least several times already, right? Five times at least, or six times. Anyway, but so I'll just assume that's the equation. So let's plug in di. So distance to the image is going to be equal to f do over do minus f, as long as I copied it right. So focal length is minus 20. Distance to the object is in the same unit, so it's 30. And then we have distance to the object is 30 minus minus 20. So again, we got minus 600 and 20, 50, 50 centimeters. So cross out 5 and you get uh, minus 12. So this means that the image distance is minus 12. So minus 12, because remember, it's positive on this side of the mirror and negative on this side of the mirror. So whenever you use mirrors, it's positive on this side where it's the same side as the object and it's negative on the other side. So the distance from here to here, the image distance is actually 12 centimeters and it's outside the mirror. We can actually calculate the magnification. Magnification is uh, minus distance to the image over distance to the object. In this case, it's minus, minus 12. Distance to the object is um, 30 centimeters. So we have 12 over 30. And I can divide by 6 on both sides. So it's 2 fifths, which is equal to 0 0.5. Four. So it's positive 0 0.4, which makes it a little bit smaller than half, 40% of the original size. So this is a convex mirror. So again, uh, the main, main idea is uh, we can actually draw three light rays, but uh, at least you should know the light ray that's going parallel to principal axis diverges as if it's coming from the focal point from the other side. Flicking out. Light rays that's going in the center equal angle of incident equal angle of flexion. So we're expecting a straight line going straight down. The intersection of these light rays, right, looks as if there's an object behind the mirror right over here. Is it real? No. If you put a sheet of paper behind a mirror, you won't see anything. So it's virtual. It's a virtual image. Okay. So um, yeah, that's the main idea. So let's redo the calculation one more time. And this time we'll actually put the uh, uh, the distance to the object between the focus and the lens. So this is all the, uh, so this covers the eight cases. You have to worry about uh, two cases for a convex mirror, two cases for a concave mirror, two cases for a convex lens, two cases for a concave uh, lens. Boy. A lot of cases, all to show you that there's a beautiful equation called the thin lens equation. And it only works right if you apply these rules. And I'm going to leave it there because we see it over again, same equation. OK, 
Okay, so um, so we're now back into our concave. Oh, I'm sorry, not a concave. We're doing convex. We're doing a convex mirror. So again, here's our convex mirror. And this time, uh, here's our folk, here's our principal axis of the mirror. So mirrors on this side, on this side. So whatever. Anyway, so uh, here's our focal point, and I'll put the. Here is our object much closer to, and um, let's see if I can do this dry ground properly. So one light ray is the easiest. It's it's as if you're hitting the center and reflecting out. So I just want to make sure that this is equal distance so I can get this properly. Hopefully I can get this. Yeah, it's about this. So this light ray hits and reflects straight out like this. Okay, that's good. And the next light ray is, it looks similar to what we did before. It runs parallel and take this focal point and move it over to here. So take as the focus behind, right? And that light ray actually, ah, uh, missed it. Yeah, okay. So it's a straight line, this light ray comes out. So light ray parallel to the principal axis comes out and diverts. And if you trace out this light ray, you'll actually see the same kind of object over here. So um, I don't think I did a nice job, but one light ray hits the center, gets reflected out. One light ray is parallel to the axis and gets reflected this way. So here are the two light rays. You can actually draw three light rays. I won't put them all in because uh, you're never going to you're going to think about it too much. And I just really want you to get two light rays, and the intersection is where the image is located. So the intersection of this light ray and this light ray actually is from this point. So here's your image. You ask yourself, is this a real image or a virtual image? So if you take a piece of paper behind the mirror, can't really exist because remember behind the mirror there should be no light. So this is a virtual image. Okay, so that's your virtual image. Um, uh, if the object is erect, then the image is erect also. So if I'm standing over here, I'd actually see a very small object right over here. Okay, so let's put some numbers in here. So I'm going to say the focal length is 30 centimeters. And remember, when you're looking at a convex mirror, right, this is actually a minus 30 centimeters. So again, focal length is positive. So maybe I'll just memorize this. So. F is greater than zero for concave mirror and convex lens. And F is less than zero, negative, right, for a convex mirror, in this case and concave lens. You have to make sure that you, you have to apply these rules because that's the only way we can get the thin lens equation to be one equation. And uh, anyway, so the distance to the object is, let's say distance to the object is uh, from here to here between, so let's say 20 centimeters. Okay, and uh, so we did the same calculation again. So distance to the image is equal to the uh, minus 30 for the focal. The distance to the object is 20. Uh, the distance to the object is 20 minus minus 30. And uh, so we have minus 600 over 50. 60 divided by 12 is minus 12. So this is minus 12 centimeters. So this is 12 centimeters behind the mirror. Okay, so, uh, well, we already said it's virtual rec and everything. So let's do the magnification, for example. Magnification is uh, minus distance to the image to over the distance to the object, negative. So it's minus of the distance to the object is minus 12. Divisible distance to the object is 20. Is that correct? 20? 20, 20, yeah. 
So we get 12 over 20, which is 6 over 10, which is 0 0.6. So 60% of the original size is your... Uh, um, 60% of the original size. So the main idea to make sure that you're actually just applying... Uh, so, uh, actually, so remember, you don't memorize that equation at all. And the only equation you should be memorizing is distance to object, distance to the image. It's a standard equation, but you also have to memorize these rules. And this equation is only true if you follow these rules. Otherwise, you'll have uh, several equations that are slightly off with pluses and minuses. But if you believe this, right, if you believe this equation, then it's only derived if you assume the focal length is positive or negative and distance to the image is positive or negative. Uh, so it's positive, but it's on the same side as the mirror for images. And uh, it's positive for lenses if it's on the opposite side of your object. So you just have to remember that. Hopefully uh, you got the basic idea. Anyway, so it was a long uh, one hour, 10 minutes, whoa. But uh, this is a summary of uh, the convex, con convex, concave mirrors and lenses.